This week has been full of crazy AI news. It all really started late last week when Sam Altman wrote on X about what we could expect and no one was disappointed. Or maybe not about the amount of news that came out of OpenAI, but did the models meet expectations? The answer to that question is unclear. There are both good and bad sides. At the same time, a lot is happening and the AI world is moving quickly. We also have news from Grok and Elon, Kling AI, Microsoft, and Claude. Let's start with OpenAI. First up was the GPT 4.1 model, as well as the Mini and Nano. These models are only available as APIs and are a strong boost to OpenAI's portfolio. 4.1 is high in the metrics, although of course the O3 and O4 Mini are clearly higher. ChatGPT, of course, also released O3 and O4 Mini. There are some models that feel like a qualitative step into the future. GPT-4 was one of those. Today is also going to be one of those days. We are going to be releasing two models, O3 and O4 Mini. These are the first models where top scientists tell us they produce legitimately good and useful novel ideas. Both are multimodal models, which is exciting. At the same time, it's disappointing that they can't handle video formats the way Gemini can. Even though the models have improved at interpreting and generating images, their overall multimodal functionality is still somewhat limited. It's focused mostly on reading and reasoning about images. As you can see in this example from OpenAI, the model summarizes and tries to reason about what the image contains rather than simply describing it. In the example, it reasons about the boats in the far distance zooms in, and starts to build context. O4 Mini should be as good at coding as O3, and both models currently ranks near the top on many benchmarks and is at the forefront, for now. The question is how long that advantage will last. Is it AGI or near genius level? As Sam Altman tweeted, well not quite. It still struggles with basic tasks like recognizing lines, something that's been a common issue for LLMs in general. There are also reports of hallucinations, despite claims that it would be free from them. And let's not forget, it's still expensive. That said, as I mentioned before, it is a really good model, especially the O3. It performs impressively in many areas, but calling it AGI is definitely a stretch for now. E moving on to Kling AI and their new model, Kling 2.0. It's an extremely impressive release, especially when it comes to action scenes. The model allows for dynamic and cinematic camera movements that feel remarkably polished. One standout improvement is the enhanced character motion dynamics, which deliver much more natural and fluid animations. Another big addition is the multi-elements editor, making video editing inside the tool 
far more intuitive and powerful. The image to video generation is highly impressive and easily among the best right now. However, the text to image capability isn't quite on the same level yet. It's solid, but still lags behind leaders in that space like Midjourney in terms of detail and coherence. Overall, Kling 2.0 is a major step forward, especially for creators focused on video. Moving on to Microsoft Woe just supercharged its Copilot platform with two major upgrades, Copilot Studio's computer use and Copilot Vision. The new computer use feature lets AI agents interact with desktop and web apps by clicking, typing, and navigating like a human, perfect for automating tasks even without APIs. Meanwhile, Copilot Vision, now in Microsoft Edge, allows the assistant to interpret and narrate what's on your screen in real time. It helps users understand content like recipes or job posts through voice guidance. Together, these features make Copilot more powerful, intuitive, and useful for real-world productivity. And at the same time, at Elon and the gang, XAI has unveiled Grok Studio, a new split-screen workspace that lets users collaborate with the Grok AI chatbot to create documents, code, and even browser-based games in real time. The interface supports multiple programming languages like Python, JavaScript, and C++, and includes a preview tab for instant code execution. Additionally, Grok Studio integrates with Google Drive, allowing users to attach and work with documents, spreadsheets, and slides directly within the platform. Alongside Grok Studio, XAI introduced a memory feature for Grok, enabling the chatbot to recall past interactions and provide more personalized responses. Users can manage this feature through the data control settings with options to review and delete specific memories. Currently in beta, the memory function is available on Grok's website and mobile apps, though it's not yet accessible to users in the EU or UK. These enhancements position Grok as a versatile AI assistant, offering a collaborative workspace and personalized interactions to support a wide range of creative and technical tasks. Moving on, Anthropic has enhanced its AI assistant, Claude, with two major features, autonomous research and Google Workspace integration. The autonomous research feature enables Claude to perform multi-step web searches, synthesizing information into comprehensive cited responses. This agentic approach allows Claude to explore various angles of a question, gather information from multiple sources and provide nuanced insights. Currently in early beta, this feature is available to users on Macs, Team, and Enterprise plans in the United States, Japan, and Brazil, with plans to expand to the pro tier soon. The Google Workspace integration allows Claude to access Gmail, Google Calendar, and Google Docs, enabling it to summarize meeting notes, identify action items from email threads, and provide context from relevant documents. This integration positions Claude as a more versatile tool for both personal and professional use, streamlining workflows, and reducing the need for manual data gathering. These updates mark a significant step forward in making Claude a more intelligent, context-aware assistant, capable of supporting a wide range of creative and technical tasks. These videos take a lot of time to research and put together, so I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button and consider subscribing. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.